you've ever wondered what it's like to fly a KC-135 for the United States Air Force all around the world, today we're going to find out. So we're here today with Captain Dane Christensen. He's the captain for the United States Air Force. How long have you been flying for the Air Force? I've been flying KC-135 since uh, 2016, so about two years. My primary mission is the KC-135 is aerial refueling. And uh, we also do missions like passenger transport, air medical evacuation, and uh, just general cargo. What are the different kinds of airplanes that you guys can refuel? We can refuel almost any Air Force airplane, Navy, Marine Corps, and uh, even foreign countries, allied countries we can refuel. Anybody that's receiver gear. What is one of your favorite things about flying the KC-135? My absolute favorite thing about flying the 135 is uh, doing VFR patterns. Uh, it's a pretty incredible thing to do, touching goes in a heavy jet. So this is a really big airplane, Dane. How do you get up in this thing when you don't have a ladder? That's a good question, Steve. We have our own little ladder in the crew yeah, chute that we go on. Let's see this, how it works. Right. So we're gonna go up and try to get into this thing. You gotta go up a ladder right under the belly. Wow, Dane, this is a pretty amazing way to get into an airplane. <laughs> oh, awesome. Once you walk up the stairs, we're gonna walk to the back of the plane and check out and see what it's like back in here. To our right here is our, our clamshell door where we load our cargo. So when, when we bring cargo aboard, there'll be rollers on the floor. Cargo comes on, it's rolled back, and, uh, strapped down. So in this cargo department, what do you usually like carry in this area? In the cargo department, we have uh, troop seating for passengers that we carry, and also we usually have three cargo vents for other bags. How many uh, passengers can you usually carry bags here? Usually around 50 people. 50 people? In the KC-135 we have two APUs to be able to start all four engines at once. And behind me is where the real work gets done in the boom pod. Alright, let's check out this boom pod. To get in this boom pod there's two entrances. You're going to take the right, I'm going to go down the left. So here we are in the boom pod. It looks like there's three spots for people to lay down. What would be the positions for all the, these people? The boom operator lays in the center couch where his flight controls are, and either an instructor or an evaluator can be on any other couch. This is where the boom operator would lay, right on this pad. Can you show me uh, the different controls here of Absolutely. how this operates? This control stick right here is how the boom boom operator flies the boom. He, the uh, the boom has two rudder vators on it, and he's able to to uh, control the boom with this stick right here. And how does it operate? It's just like up, down, it's, left, right? Yep, it's just like a like any other joystick would operate, and that uh, it's hydraulically driven. This lever right here is what controls the boom's telescoping feature um, to extend the boom into the receiver aircraft. This is the boom's instrument panel here. With these gauges, he's able to tell where the boom is in the envelope, um, and he gives corrections to the receiver aircraft based on, on uh, what they need to do. And this is his view right here. This is all he has that opens up? This is the view that uh, opens up. This is the boom sighting window. And uh, the view gets a little bit better with that with that sighting window open. So laying here on the uh, boom operator, I hope you guys aren't claustrophobic because it is tight. <laughs> Look at this, so interesting. How many boom operators usually fly along with you guys on missions? Typically just one boom operator. The crew for this aircraft is two pilots and one boom. And I see they have a mirror here. Is that to make sure they're looking good for the ladies when they land? <laughs> it absolutely is. Um, this mirror here, they have another mirror right here and they can adjust this mirror to be able to see the receiver better as they're coming in. All right, now that we're done checking out that boom pod, we're gonna go to my favorite spot, the cockpit. We have four engines, each one producing about 20,000 pounds of thrust burning 2,500 pounds each for a total of about 10,000 pounds an hour. So right behind the co-pilot seat is where the boom operator sits. Uh, this used to be the navigator station. Uh, 
Uh, we did away with the Navigator in the 90s with the avionics upgrade. So this uh, nav station is still populated, meaning it still has all the nav equipment that it had when there was a Navigator sitting here. This is our fuel panel, and with this we can control the offload and uh, where our fuel is on the aircraft. We can drain from the wings to the aft body where we can pump it out to a receiver aircraft. What's for, on the boom, Dane, what uh, is the fuel flow for the boom? The fuel flow that we have during the offload depends on what we're pumping gas into. If we're offloading to an F-16, uh, we'll be using one pump and the fuel flow would probably be right around 2,000 pounds a, a minute. Steve, we're in the Block 40 aircraft right now, which is the second most updated version of this aircraft. The Block 45, which is the most updated version, all these engine instruments have been replaced by a, by a glass screen and the autopilot has been updated uh, tremendously. Here's our uh, air conditioning panel. That's where we make sure that our pressurization is working properly, set to pressurization. Below that we have our electrical panel. We have three generators on board. Um, our number four engine does not have a, a generator on it. Below that we have our COM1 radio. We can we usually use this to talk uh, for the air refueling to the receiver. To the right of that, we have our autopilot panel on the Block 40 aircraft. That's been updated in the Block 45. And then uh, to the right of that, we have our COM 2 and 3. We use a remote tuning for our COM 2 and 3, so we just use the FMS, punch the frequencies into the FMS for that. I hope you guys enjoyed that behind the scenes little tour of what it's like flying a KC 135 around. Dane, I appreciate you serving our country. Thanks for your service, and uh, thanks for giving us the tour. It's my pleasure. Thanks for coming up, Steve.